What I mean by engaging the horse's back is simply getting the horse to lift its back up to support the weight of the rider. But more than just that, what that does by lifting its back up is what allows the horse to connect the back end and the front end. Unless the horse's back comes up, those two parts are not going to be in sync with one another. Very often we look at horses and you can clearly see that their legs are not moving together. In the trot, when you see the diagonal pairs, the absolute cardinal rule of classical dressage is that the hind leg and the front leg should move together on those diagonal pairs. By lifting its back and connecting the front and back end, that is what puts the shock absorbers on the horse. By connecting through its back, those shock absorbers allow the concussion of movement to be taken up in the soft tissues instead of the hard tissues of the joints. In days gone by, it was normal for a horse to have a 20 year useful life. Now we're seeing horses only have four, five, and six years of useful life for this very reason. Their shock absorber system is not working. So every time they're being ridden, all of the concussion of the movement is going directly into the hard tissue, into the joints, you know, into the coffin bone, into those areas that can't sustain it without injury over time. Now for you as a rider, we want to do that because it makes the horse comfortable. Some people think that there's just one goal. That goal is to have the head and neck tucked over like this, you know, we all see of that proud horse. Now, that is true of an advanced level horse that has lowered its back. Its hindquarters actually will lower and the front end will come up and then we'll have that lovely position that people think of as being in the frame. Round is in the back. The horse can have its head on the ground and be round. How we get a horse to lift its back, in the beginning, the first thing that we have to achieve is to get the horse to seek the contact with the bridle. The French used to call this the descent du mai, meaning the descent on the hand. Depending on the level of a horse's strength through its top line, depends on the level of how high you can bring the head and neck. Then it's very simple. All you do over time is simply ask the horse to bring its pole up. Back in, we've had a little more length through the shoulder. There, like that, that's more like it. And now develop a working trot, bringing the pole up, but maintaining the same rhythm. So only bring the pole as high as you can maintain that rhythm. If you feel the horse back drop, then you have to let it drop its head back down. And that's the beauty of the stretching and classical dressage. They don't resist it. Once you teach a horse correctly, we don't encounter all the resistance that we see happening with people who are roll curing horses and pulling their nose down to their chins and with draw reins and all these kind of mechanical devices. So we have to lift ourselves up, literally pull ourselves up so that there's no downwards pressure on the back of that horse at all. Because if you're sitting heavy in the old heavy style of driving down into your seat like this, well, what do you think that's going to do to the back? If you're trying to bring the back up, you certainly wouldn't want to press down into it, right? When the horse's back is up, it should feel like it stretches up into you and you'll feel your thighs spread apart. And it'll be very dramatic the first time you feel it because it makes you feel proud and tall and it brings you up like this instead of collapsing you down. So those are the things. It takes one year to establish a top line on a horse. Doesn't matter whether it's a three-year-old baby or a 10-year-old or a 16-year-old. It takes one year to develop the top line to the point that you can begin to develop collection. It takes two years to bring a horse into collection. And that's with people who know.